Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph vertical and horizontal lines. So basically when we're graphing horizontal and vertical lines, a lot of times, you know, when we're graphing lines, we use the slope intercept form or we could use the intercept more uh, form with standard form. Well, when you're first learning to graph lines, one of the key things that we do is create a table of values. And, you know, because any kind of coordinate point that you plot has an x and a y coordinate because over here we have the x-axis and here we have the y-axis. So when we're graphing, basically all we have is a number line and a number line. So we have a horizontal number line, which is the x-axis, and we have a vertical number line, which is the y-axis. And both of them intersect here at what we call the origin, which is 0, 0. Going to the right is going to be positive for x. Going to the left is negative for x. Up is positive for y, down is negative for y. And you can always go by different scales. For this, my scaling is going to be going by 1. So a lot of times what we can do is um, when we're graphing, you know, we can just, if we're given an equation, just create a table. And typically, you can see my scale here. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So a lot of times, if I'm going to want to graph this, I might want to use my scaling and choose some points between, so I have my x and my y points. So I have x coordinates and y coordinates. And I'm going to go to negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Oops, I'm not going to have enough room. Let's do negative 2. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. OK? So instead of going from negative 4 to 4, I'm just going to go from negative 2 to 2. Now, however, to graph an equation by using a table, what we do is we take our x values and we plug them into the equation to find the y value. And usually that's nice when we have something in standard form or slope intercept form. Well, the problem here, with the tough thing with vertical lines is you can see if we chose these x values, right? Because we want to find out what are the points here for on the scale. You know, when x equals negative 1, what does y equal? When x equals 4, what does y equal? That's why we're creating a table. That's where these numbers came from. They represent the points on the x-axis, and we want to find the points on the y, or the y, those represent the x-coordinates. We want to find the y-coordinates. Well, the problem is we don't have anything to plug our x into. The only thing we have is we have the equation y equals 2. Well, guess what? That's what 2 is going to equal for all of these. So when I go to negative 2, y equals 2. When I go to negative 1, y equals 2. 0, y equals 2. 1, y equals 2. 2, y equals 2. So when I, if I connect those, what you can do is understand that y equals 2, that just creates a horizontal line. Because it doesn't matter what x value I choose. I could go up to negative 4, down, uh, down to, I'm sorry, down to negative 4, up to positive 4, to negative 16, to 100. y is always equal to 2. So that's it. Done. So what's nice about this, to kind of speed it up a little bit, is here you have y equals negative 3. Well, since I know that's a horizontal line, the another way to kind of think about this is remember, here's your y-axis, right? And here's the x-axis. Well, here's 0 on the y-axis. Here's y equals 1, y2, y3. So at that point here, 3 is on the y-axis. Well, we're saying y is equal to negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So you just find where y is equal to negative 3. And then using your understanding of the table, you can understand that y equals negative 3 produces a horizontal line. All right. So the same thing can be said with graphing a vertical line. And in reality, you know, I think the table kind of gets a little bit confusing because usually we always choose the x. Um, usually we always choose the x first and then plug in the values of x to find y because looking at a function, x is going to be your input, um, input value or your, uh, your independent value. So you're going to plug them into your equation. But you can work the other way to think about this. So if I was to create a table, again, the same thing. But rather than looking at the points on the x-axis, I'm going to choose points on the y-axis. And again, you could just, you know, let's just pick the same points, but this time for y. So we do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Well, again, in this case, x is equal to negative 5. It doesn't matter what the value of y is, x is always equal to negative 5. And you could also kind of reason with this. If y equals a number produces a horizontal line, then x produces a number is going to be a vertical line. But let's plot this graph, let's plot this table to see. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when x equals negative 2, negative 5. Negative 1, negative 5. 0, 5. When y equals 1, x equals negative 5. <clears throat> when y equals 2, x equals negative 5. So you guys can see 
this produces a vertical line. And again, the same thing. If you guys think about this, just think about this as a number line. Forget about the y-axis is even there. x equals 4. That means that the value x is 4 on the x-axis, just like I did here. You find y, the coordinate on the y-axis. But knowing your understanding now of x equals 4, you know it doesn't matter for what value, because now if we include the y-axis, now I have all these different values for y. Well, it doesn't matter. x is always equal to 4. So therefore, it's going to produce a vertical line at x equals 4. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph horizontal and vertical lines. Thanks.